Just think for a second what it would mean to quadruple your income. What's going on guys? It's Eric Braun, AKA Not Your Average Lender with another episode and the last episode of Produce or Plateau. Now the whole goal of this series, and I hope I accomplished it, was to give you guys strategies to push your business forward while being quarantined and during these crazy times, right? Now, if, if I did help you in any way, shoot me a message, comment below, subscribe, like, share. I greatly appreciate the feedback. Now, as a loan officer, especially with realtors and loan officers, a lot of relationships in business are one-way streets. You see all the value going one way and you never see the value returned, right? My goal as a loan officer is to help you guys move the needle in your business, especially realtors, especially my referral partners. Um, and today's strategy that I'm going over, I know is gonna do that for you. Why? Because it has in mind. This strategy, this blueprint that I'm gonna, put, that I'm gonna lay out for you guys, has allowed me to quadruple my business and quadruple my income. Now, imagine what that means. Just, just think for a second what it would mean to quadruple your income. Now, what we're going over today is, is goal setting. Um, we've all heard the importance of it, but I'm gonna say 80% of the people who do set goals every year do it incorrectly. This is how I set goals. This is the blueprint from, from A to Z. Um, let me know if you guys get anything out of it. Comment below, subscribe, like, share, all that fun stuff. So what we want to do, a lot of people say, I want to close X amount of deals per year, right? That's not good enough. That's not specific enough. Why? Because it's not motivating. A number or even, even income, like I want to make $100,000 a year, that's not motivating enough. What we have to really figure out is why we want to make the $100,000 or $120,000 or wh whatever it is to you, right? I think that's a good place to start as a real estate agent and a real estate professional. I think you should be shooting for that minimum. So in this column, we're gonna break down what we want, right? Not what we're spending right now. We've all heard of the importance of, of putting together a monthly budget to keep track on, uh, keep, you know, stay on track with our personal finances. This is a goal budget, right? So how much do you want to spend on your apartment or mortgage? How much do you want to spend or what kind of car do you want and how much does it cost, right? So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to just fill in some of these examples real fast. Let's say you want to spend $2,500 a month on your, on your rent, right? Uh, that gets you an apartment that you, you enjoy more than the one that you're in or it moves you out of your parents' house, whatever it is. Um, and let's say between your car payments and you got to make sure you're specific in this. This is a very general and vague. I would suggest going a lot deeper on this, but for now, just for video purposes, I'm going to just go through this with you guys. So let's say the, the car that you want is $500 a month. The insurance, what did I have on here is $300 per month and you're going to spend a hundred dollars in a month in gas, right? Then you have your cell phone bill. Maybe this is a little exaggerated for some of you guys. Maybe it's, maybe it's more than that, whatever it is. Uh, but you have to factor, factor these, these things in. You have to be very, very specific. Now, the next thing is food, right? So I think $20 a day comes out to $600 a month. I know I spend a lot more money than that, and I know most of us do. But let's just keep, this, again, this is just an example. So you got food, then you have personal care. So if, you know, for my girls out there, Manny, Petty, you know, uh, your hair. I know some, you know, me personally, I like to, I like to tan. I like to get my hair cut, you know, every two weeks. Let's, let's figure a hundred dollars for that. Fair enough. Um, then you have miscellaneous expenses. I'm just going to put a thousand dollars, right? Uh, then you have business expenses because we all know it caught, it costs money to make money, right? Or it takes money to make money. So let's put a thousand dollars for there. And then a lot of people where they go wrong is they don't include this. This is very, very, very important. A lot of people map out their monthly budget and there's no savings goal in there. There's no point of not having a savings goal. That means you're just going to continue living paycheck to paycheck. So let's say we want to save a minimum of $3,000 a month. All right. Very conservative numbers. I think this should, this should be the bare minimum. Uh, a lot of you, should set your goal a lot higher than this. But again, this is just for the video. Now, all of this added up comes out to $9,200 a month, which comes out to 
$110,000, or $110,400 rather, uh, per year. You always want to round up this number, right? Because you're going to forget some stuff, stuff is going to pop up. So I took the $110,400 and rounded it up to one hundred twenty. dollars okay? So that's going to be our net income goal, because I'm going to talk about taxes in a little bit, and a lot of people mess up there. So this is what we need to make net after taxes, which I'll go into, to live the life that we want to live. Isn't that what it's all about, right? It's not, I want to make $120,000 per year. It's, I want to do all of this, which equals $120,000 a year or whatever your number is, right? It's very, very important to plan this out. Like for me, you know, I'm, I'm going for the Lamborghini Urus, right? That's $3,500 a month, easy, right? That changes the numbers a lot, right? But anyway, let me just erase that. So our net income goal is 120,000. Now what we need to figure out is the average commission per deal, right? I did a very basic, um, what do you call it? I did a very basic, we all get paid differently. Like I'm a loan officer, you're probably a realtor. So we're all, we're in different industries. We get paid differently. Realtors have different splits, whatever it is. So just hear me out. I'm gonna just use an example that I thought was fitting. Let's do a $500,000 house. Let's say you make 2%. That comes out to 10 grand, all right? But your broker, takes, uh, your broker takes 30%, which means you're left over with seven grand per deal, right? This is what a lot of people mess up. You got seven grand per deal after your broker split, but don't forget about Uncle Sam, right? So let's just take 30% off the top. Again, I mean, I'm not an accountant, Consult your accountant on what you should be doing with your taxes. But for this example, just for the video, I'm going to do 30%. So that means I get 70% of that 7,000, right? That leaves me with $4,900 per deal after my broker gets paid, after Uncle Sam gets paid. So now what we have to ask ourselves is how many deals do I have to close per month to make a net income of $120,000? You do $120,000 divided by 4,900. That's 24.48. So 24 and a half deals per year, I should say, which comes out to about two deals per month. Now you want to you want to round that number up as well. So conservatively, if I do three deals a month, this is going to happen, and all of this is going to happen. This is what we really want, right? This is the purpose of getting super specific on everything. Who cares about the number? What does it do for me? That's, that's motivating. So if you do three deals a month, now for this video, we don't have enough time. So I'm just gonna go briefly go over what you should do even after that and get even more specific. But then ask yourself, how many listing appointments do I have to go on? How many buyer cons consultations do I have to do? How many showings do I have to do, right? And track those numbers week after week, or at least quarterly. So if you wanna close three deals per month, that means I have to go on 10 listing appointments. I know if I did 10 listing appointments, I mean, uh, you know, eight listing appointments last month, I'm not on track. I need to get those number up, numbers up. So take some time to kind of reverse engineer this even further. But I figured I'd go over you know, why the, the number is not enough. First, we have to identify what we want and that's gonna give us the number. That's the main premise. Uh, another principle that I want you guys to take away is be super, super specific and also think big. This, to, I mean, in my opinion, this is small thinking, this example. I think everybody watching this, the fact that you took the 10 minutes out of your day to watch this, you, you have the potential to do a lot more than this. So think big, right? And if there's anything I could do to help you get to this number, let me know, please. That's the ultimate goal for me. Again, a lot of relationships in real estate are one-way streets. I never, ever 
want any of my relationships to be one-way streets. And that's why I made the movement of real partnerships. That's why I put together this, this series to hopefully help you guys. Because I know if you win, I win. So have a good day. Let me know if you need anything mortgage-related. And let me know if you got anything out of this.